All right, how about this? I believe we've done this integral before. Do you remember that? Actually, we did it in a pretty insightful way. We split x cubed into x squared and x. Do you remember that? And then x dx was dx squared. So everything became uh, a function of x squared, and this was reduced to a simpler integral that we knew how to do. Okay. So that required a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit of luck because it worked with x cubed, but it would not have worked with x to the fourth or any other power. So that's fine, that can happen. But now I will show you something much more robust <coughs> that works for any polynomial in the numerator, doesn't matter what it is. The goal is to modify this expression so that the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is less than the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. Once you've achieved that, you can proceed with partial fractions. But in order to achieve that, you have to carry out the long division of this polynomial by this one, which will essentially represent this fraction as a standalone polynomial plus another simpler fraction where the numerator does have the property that its degree is less than that of the denominator. So basically, step one, long division of this polynomial by this one. So let me do this. I've actually never done this in my life, believe it or not. So this is the first time doing it. And also, I'd like to say that Russians and Americans, once again, do this differently. And the American way is far better. The way Russians arrange this exercise, the writing, the two the several things that you're writing on the board can actually clash and run into each other. And that doesn't happen with the American way. And let me try and do this. So I think the way you do this is you put the polynomial that you're dividing here and the polynomial you're dividing by out here. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. And so now... You ask yourself, this is just a quick review of polynomial, long division of polynomials. What would I have to multiply this polynomial by to cancel x cubed? And the answer is, of course, x. Because if I multiply this by x, x will need x squared, produce x cubed, and that will help me cancel x cubed. So that answer is x, and so x goes up here. And so then you multiply x by this polynomial, you get x cubed plus x, and that goes here. And then you subtract one from the other, and you get minus x. Okay, so this is the quotient, and this is the remainder. So this is the quotient, and this is the remainder. That's where they came from. So here they are very, they are very similar. Maybe I should have diff chosen different polynomials, but that's what it is. All right, so I will erase the dirty work and just keep the summary. All right, so let's just copy it over where we substitute this into the integral. Or do we actually have to do this? Or can we just integrate this on the fly? I think we can integrate this on the fly. We've been at it for a couple of weeks now. We're pretty good. This is 1 half x squared. And this is 1 half log of x squared plus 1. Do you guys see that? So we have. So this term produces 1 half x squared. Okay, here's what I see here. Again, I'll give you my whole trend of thought. Number one, I see x squared plus one. I get all excited because maybe the arc tan will be there. And it isn't. Because it's not one on top. It's not one over x squared plus one. It's x over x squared plus one, so no arc tan. So then I begin to see this as one over something. That will work if that 
1 over something is being multiplied by the derivative of something. And is it? Almost. The derivative of, the, of x squared plus 1 is 2x. And instead, I only have x. So in my head, I will multiply this by 2 and make up for it with a 1 half, just because I want to have literally the derivative of x squared plus 1. That's how my thought process works. And so now it's strictly 1 over something times the derivative of something. So that's log. And not forgetting about the coefficient of 1 half, we end up with 1 half log of x squared plus 1. Okay, so now you know how to integrate any rational function. 